Okay, dot diagrams. Big difference in dot diagrams. In any case, all the dot diagrams are showing us are valence electrons. Okay? You just need to be sure that for any atom that is involved in whether you're looking at a single atom, whether you're looking at a compound, every atom that's involved needs to have a complete outer shell of eight electrons. Now, it can do that either by getting electrons away and reducing its outer shell, uh, which had one or two or three, getting rid of it completely, which then means that whatever electrons are under that is a new outer shell when they're full, or by sealing electrons to make up any that they're missing, or by sharing pairs of electrons to where they functionally have access to eight. Um, but any dot diagram, you're going to have the uh, symbol. Let's just pick one out. Let's pick out. Uh, you're going to have the symbol of the element, and then you're going to surround it with however many valence electrons it has in whatever arrangement is shown on your periodic table. You should all have a periodic table with your little pattern of dots on there. Um, but even if you don't know the dots, you can look at where an element is on the table and you can predict how many dots it's going to have. Okay? Aluminum is in group 13. So if you look at the last few electrons on aluminum, you've got 3s2, 3p1. Okay? Or you have 3s, which has one or two electrons. You have 3p, which has one. Now these two that are in the 3s, they're paired together, and so I represent those two as a pair of dots, and they can be on the top, bottom, left, or right of the symbol, it doesn't matter. This one right here, because it's unpaired, it's just a single electron, it's going to be on one of my other sides, this other symbol. Okay, again, it doesn't matter which side, but that's why some are in pairs, and that's why some are singles. Okay, and again, it's only going to be S and P electrons that get represented. So when you make compounds, you're doing dot diagrams. Um, in covalent, it's just like the name says. Co means with. Valent, we're talking valence. They are sharing valence electrons. So if I've got something like, oh, let's look at something. Hydrogen and sulfur are both non-metals. Non-metals share electrons. They don't give them away. So my hydrogen is going to have one electron, and I'm going to have two of them. My sulfur is going to have six, okay, because where it is, okay, it's, uh, let's see here, 3s2, 3p4. So the S electrons are going to be in a pair. The P electrons are going to be pair, single, single. So pair, single, single. So the sulfur still has space for how many more? Two. Two, exactly. Okay. Now, it's important to note the place where they're going to be sharing is going to be a place where there's these single unpaired electrons because that's where we've got space for more electrons to go. So what's going to happen is that these hydrogens are going to float up and they're going to get nice and cozy and they're going to end up sharing pairs of electrons with the sulfur. So that's kind of going to over to that. they're going to be sharing pairs. Now the hydrogens, they only need two. Each hydrogen has access to two. One that it brought and one that it's sharing with the sulfur. The sulfur has the six that it started with as well as these two that it is sharing with the hydrogens. Now I can symbolize this uh, shared pair of electrons between these two as a single bond. Okay? So it looks like that. 
and that can sometimes make it a little bit easier to see where electrons are being shared. We can depict them as bonds instead of depicting them as trace bonds. Either way is fine. In an ionic bond, in some ways, ionic is a whole lot easier to pick some covalent is. Let me just make sure that is ionic. You're going to have metals, which are going to end up giving electrons away. You're going to have your nonmetals, which are going to end up stealing those electrons. And so when you do your uh, <coughs> dot diagrams, let's do something more. Uh, let's do magnesium chloride. Okay. I have my magnesium, which is in group two. So it starts off with two electrons that are in a pair. And you're going to have what did I say chloride? Doesn't matter. Where'd that come from? That's not even right. I'll finish talking. I'll record the video. You guys can get out of here. It's good month. Okay. Chlorines are going to have seven electrons each. And so each one is going to end up stealing an electron from that energy unit. Magnesium loses two charges, so it's going to end up the charge of positive two. Each chlorine ends up with a charge of negative one. And we can pick that it is taking those electrons by locking it up in brackets. 